Doomsday is upon us. Here's your look at the DC Collectibles Doomsday Clock, the Comedian, and Marionettes. DC Collectibles brings to life the characters featured in the smash hit comic book series Doomsday Clock by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. This action figure pairing of the comedian and marionettes is in a 7 inch scale and the figures are loaded with very dynamic articulation points. Collect all three two packs for the full experience. First, we're going to figure out how tall the figure stands and put the tape measure to the top of the comedian's head. We're going to do something a little bit different this time around. Normally, I always do inches to centimeters, but for those people that feel left out, why are we always second, playing second fiddle to the inch crowd, to those centimeter groups? I'm going to start by saying that the comedian stands this time around at 17.5 centimeters in height which in inches works a little bit differently. Now 6.9 inches tall, about seven inches. We're gonna go ahead and now and do the exact same thing for Marionette, there we go. And putting that to the very top of her head, she is a little bit shorter. So short in fact, sorry, centimeters group, we're starting back with inches, 6.6 .6 inches high. Centimeters, there you go guys, there you go. Didn't forget about you. 16.9 centimeters tall. Sort of in the same way that Mime didn't get any accessories. Poor Marionette sadly doesn't get any accessories this go around. The only weapons are given to that of the comedian. And his trademark dual pistols are included with this figure release as well. Cast and painted in a glorious silver. The handles are done in black, and that's really about it. That's all you're getting with the two included accessories. They can be housed either one of two places, one of which the obvious ones, if you want to have the comedian posed, poised, if you will, with his pistols in hand, you can put them very quite easily into both of his hands. Not the case necessarily when it, when it came to the Rorschach figure with that alternate pair of hands don't know what was going on with there. But needless to say, you can fit both pistols into the comedian's hands, or what you can also do too, is at the very side, he has holsters. They just fit quite easily into place. Uh, the thing about it though, is if you are taking the pistols and you are, let's say, use the, using the argument, let's try putting them into his holsters. We will all agree that they do fit quite easily in place. But the un unfortunate result of that now is, You've got Comedian with gripping hands. And it looks like he should be holding something, and unfortunately, he's not holding anything. So that's one trade-off, unfortunate trade-off that you get as a result of Comedian not holding the pistols, but instead being holstered instead. There's one interesting experience that I'm feeling here. Uh, it's not necessarily relative to Comedian's behind, but it's, it's something to note that there's a slickness to the plastic that they use for not necessarily the whole figure, but just his lower half. Picking him up, it's only easiest, best described if you had the figure physically in front of you. And you could say, yeah, I know. I've I'm, I'm got the same thing happening here as well. You too? You got that slick feel as well? I know, I was just thinking that myself. We must be kindred spirits. We were thinking the exact same thing. This must be what it feels like when doves cry. Anyways, though, it does feel like they're there's this strange, slick feeling to the plastic. I've convinced myself it's not necessarily anything that's coming out from the plastic itself. It's just the type of plastic that they use, this slick sheen sort of uh, plastic that they used for the body. The lower half doesn't have any, any uh, paint added to it whatsoever. The knee pads, the little uh, sheets here that hold, which I might also add non-removable knives, Everything on this guy from the waist down, except for a few, well, that's not supposed to be there, that little smudge of paint. Other than the few little paints that's been added to the bullets, everything else for the rest of the figure lowered from the waist down is just a, a sheen, a shiny black plastic. The head sculpt is good. Um, I mean, of course, there's a couple of different directions that they went with these. And I, I mean, looking at the pages, I'm going to just put these figures down for a second. Looking through the Doomsday Clock, 
Um, I found that the artwork a little bit more was realistic to what we eventually got with these figures here. I say this as I'm bringing in a really disappointing Rorschach. Probably one of the, not necessarily from his whole body, but like one of by far the worst Rorschachs from a head sculpt that I've seen. Not that I've seen many Rorschach figures. I'd eventually like to get around to picking up those DC Direct Rorschach, uh, well, Watchmen movie figures. But clearly, like, looking at all of these figures stacked up one another, or together here, I have noticed, though, that all the characters seem to be more of a cartoon interpretation rather than more realistic. Even liking Mime as much as I did, he was my favorite figure of the two figures that we looked at before. Let's get Marionette back, and there we go. All right. Of all those four figures that we've looked at, comparing them to the pages in which the comics, in which the characters were pulled from, um, the ones in the comics are a little bit more realistic. The reason why I say that is I find more than anything else, Comedian and Marionette seem to have more cartoony looks to them, as if you were taking the, the pages of Doomsday Clock and you were making it into a DC animated feature film. These would be kind of those characters that I would expect this is what they would look like in an animated treatment, not necessarily in the comics. Just feel the need to mention that. Anyways, there's the four figures that we've had a look at so far, thus far. Um, the only one that we, of course, the other set is the Dr. Manhattan set that comes with the very hard to pronounce Osmo, Osmandius. I always screw up saying his name, but he's also the, that two pack, as far as I know, isn't out yet. Uh, will when eventually it does come out. We're going to have a look at it on this channel as well. But in the meantime, those are the four figures that we've had a look at thus far, currently, right now. I mean, we've already looked at these two. Feel free to check out a more extensive review of the aforementioned uh, Rorschach and mine. I just actually just did it before this video. I'm assuming I probably will put these videos together back to back because they are, you know, of the same uh, same line. So probably it was the previous video that you saw before that. I'm getting, getting ahead of myself. Anyways, I think the point I wanted to make in that whole rambling of the last five minutes or so was the fact that these characters look a little bit more cartoony, a little bit more like DC animated versions of Doomsday Clock rather than the comic. Uh, it's still a nice head sculpt for the comedian. He's got this big splotch of I don't even want to peel it off because I feel like underneath that is going to be unfinished paint. But he's got this little uh, wart of plastic right there. He's like, shocks, you have to bring it to everyone's attention. I think everyone can see it, but there's my finger pointing at it nonetheless. It's right there. That sculpt's good. It does capture the look of Comedian. But again, it kind of looks more like animated Comedian than it does anything else. Unfortunately, when I did get the figure out of the packaging, I noticed this arm right here, very, very loose. <sighs> it's unfortunate, you should never really get a figure out of packaging and immediately be graced with a very loose figure. That should not be answering the door the moment you walk up to its doorstep. This should not be loose right away. I mean, anybody that would say, you can't even really even say it's mold degradation, even though it's probably using the same arms as the DC Essentials line. But this shouldn't be loose immediately getting out of packaging. I mean, really, both arms are excessively loose. Luckily, though, I still don't have the problems with the ankles. The ankles seem okay so far on the comedian. And another sign that you can see that these are of the same variety as the, uh, the Essentials lineup. Once again, no peg holes on the undersides of their feet. Still don't know why they don't do that. Paint is pretty good on this guy. I mean, it gets a little messy around the strapped area here. It's interesting, though, that I'm certain he should have a smiley face on his little badge. Can't think of a reasoning why there wouldn't be a smiley face on his badge, and yet it's completely omitted. Wonder why that is the case. Um, like I said, though, it paints pretty good. Um, the, the white over top of any existing color usually will disappoint. It disappoints a little bit. You can see how it looks like a second coat of white could have maybe helped a little bit. This side, the red's pretty good with the white. Not too, too much bleed. Overall, pretty good looking figure from a paint standpoint. 
a little bit there also in the back there, but I'm drawing all these small little attention to details. I guess that's really what I'm supposed to be doing here. I mean, if I'm not bringing attention to details, good or bad or otherwise, I guess I'm probably not doing my job. So let's look at his posability. His head rotates all the way around. I could do this until the cows come home, but I won't. Head moves up and down, angles back and forth. The shoulders do hinge outward. This side is really only painted on. This side is actually a piece of plastic that's been put over top of it. It doesn't seem to restrict it, but you did see one thing that it does do, and it does do notoriously. Um, I really didn't think it actually would have popped off the way that it did, but I, it does allow me, it reminds me of something I want to bring to everyone's attention. When it does come off of the figure, it's only attached by pegs. There's a little obvious hole on both sides, and this just snaps into place. Sometimes you do have to move it around a couple of times to figure out which side is which. I think it's actually this side right here. There we go. That goes on both sides. It's unfortunately the case prior to shooting this review and playing, just playing around with the figure for a little bit, I did notice that this popped off. I would say every single time I moved the arm. And yet, when I ended up hitting the record button, I, for some strange reason, was hopeful that this wasn't going to pop off on me. And now, now I can't get it back in place. Hold on one second. With a little bit of TLC, that stays, well, it doesn't stay in place, but it stays in those grooves. I really would hate to rely on the ever go-to backup plan of just gluing that in place. You shouldn't really have to glue things in place, but the way that they tab that, it would really ask the question, why didn't they glue that in place? And yet so naively, I just pushed forward with the review, hoping that that wasn't gonna pop off again. Boy, oh boy, look at me with egg all over my face. So anyways, the bicep does swivel. It's got a double hinge on the elbow and it has a swivel in the hand, which hinges back and forth. Comedian does have an upper torso crunch. Uh, the way that they've done it is the strapping is molded in two places. Obviously, it's not one steady stream of plastic connecting the two together. It does have an ab crunch. It doesn't ab crunch forward too much, but does ab crunch back a fair bit, actually. Uh, it does have a waist swivel. The legs on the very slicked lower half of him move out, move forward, move back. It has a swivel. It almost just feels like my fingers are sliding off the figure. It does have a half cut swivel on the thigh. It does also have a double hinge on the knee. And it does have the very problematic ankle joint that anybody who's collected the DC Essentials figures probably already know about by now at nausea. So there is the comedian. Good figure. Still resonates more like for me as an animated treatment of comedian rather than the comic treatment of comedian. He's a well put together figure. Still has loose problems with joints that I don't personally feel should be the case when I get the figure immediately out of packaging. And something that they probably should have factored in was somebody is probably going to want to move that arm. And moving that arm, you saw how quickly that shoulder pad went across the room. Luckily, it didn't go too far. Luckily, I was able to aid and repair it, but I probably will have to take some glue to it just to make sure that when I'm moving the arm, it's not going to do that every single time. I don't want that to happen every single time. Let's have a look at Marionette's. Marionette's a good-looking figure. I don't know if I would say the expression really resonates the best for her. In the comics, she's almost a little bit more playful. Of course, a, tra a traumatic soul as well. But I think I would have put a, maybe a more of a smile on her face or something instead. She's got more of a somber look than she has anything else. One big problem I have with the figure is that they've given her these karate chopping hands. Could these have been the only options available when giving this figure a set of hands? Why couldn't they have given her an extra pair of hands? Uh, at the beginning of this review, I sort of played into that by just having her as like the... You know, the trademark, when you think of it like a marionette, the strings cut, she's just sort of, you know, falling down like that. I mean, that's probably how I'm going to display the figure. I can't find fault for that reasoning, why they would include these hands. But I do think other hands should have also been included in the mix as well. Uh, the paint on this one does feel a little on the chalky side, as if you can clearly see like paint has been put over top of an existing plastic. I'm really like looking at you flesh-toned arms. 
you can see how it has been painted by the way that there's flaking that's developing right around the hinge joint. I'm sure that flaking will continue and be still persistent the more times you move that arm. I just want feel the need to mention that to you. Once again, like kind of like the comedian's lower half, the upper half of Marionette sort of has again this slick. It reminds me of the DC Universe uh, Batman Beyond, Terry McGinnis actually, that had the same similar type of plastic. She's got the lower skirt, which is a softer plastic. And of uh, the interesting things that they decided to go with when it came to this figure, they gave her tights. More importantly, they gave her fabric over top of her existing legs. I don't know if you can see it. There it is right there. That's probably the best indicator right there. Or if I bend the knee, you can see how that's fabric underneath. Clever, because we haven't seen this done before. Not many, if any, that I can think of, DC collectible figures have ever had tights. Black Canary has had fishnet stockings, but I don't think it's ever been done on these figures. It's been done primarily on the DC Universe or DC Multiverse figures. So it's a nice little added touch that they would include this. Um, of course, the fabric gets disjointed a bit by the time you get to the feet, where clearly you can see that this is more molded plastic. It, At the very least, I would hope that instead of using this black, which I guess it would have started as black, but the way it's been stretched out actually comes across a little bit more like a brownish gray than anything else. I would have hoped also that that same color would have made its way down to its feet as well, so that it didn't look like, hey, here's fabric, and then immediately, oh, we got plastic. Uh, she does have a couple of little bows, which seem to be separate pieces as well. They've just simply put it over top of the fabric. Longevity of these will be determined, of course, by how many times you're bending the leg, making sure, of course, the knee, when you are bending the leg back, isn't snagging on that fabric. And, of course, punctures and tears, and obviously the very obvious seam lines, are something that you're probably going to notice with this particular figure. From the back, it is an eyesore. From the front, you're really not going to see it anyways. Uh, she does have a neat construction to her. Shortcomings, yes, by things like her arms. Clever, at least, they make up for it by incorporating like fabric over top of her legs, but I just don't know how long that's going to be before punctures and rips start to develop. Okay, so let's have a look at her posability. Now, her head rotates all the way around. Head moves up and down, angles back and forth. I'm trying to think, looking at this figure, whether they could reuse mold pieces for anything else. Maybe Joker's daughter for, like, the skirt portion? Possibly. Um, we really haven't gotten many. I don't think we've gotten any female DC Universe Essentials figures. I'm trying to think of that right now. DC Essentials female figures? Have we gotten any? I know we were supposed to get Harley Quinn at one point, but I don't think up to this point she has been yet released. So maybe this is a precursor to what we're going to be getting with DC Essentials female body molds. Obviously not with fabric on her legs, but you still get the idea. So anyways, like I said, her head rotates all the way around. I love the actually the sculpting of her hair, something I didn't really touch base on too much. Again, the face looks good. just kind of wish that she had a little bit more expression to it. Shoulders hinge out. They rotate all the way around. One thing that this does break the mold of, no pun intended, is that they've given her a natural looking body. Now, before you jump all over me and say, hey, hold on a second, that's not a natural body. Just by comparing it to, say, like a DC Universe female body. If you've ever had like the original Wonder Woman or Harley Quinn, you know how spindly, how thin those arms are. I really much prefer these arms as being the go forward when it comes to future uh, arms when they use them for the DC Essentials figures. It's a good size. It's not too big, it's not too muscular, but it's not too thin and stick-like either. As I said, she's got the double hinge on the elbow. Uh, she also has the rotation in the hands. Still kind of wish that she didn't have the flat karate chop in hands for the whole only option that she's available with. Let's say she has the upper torso ball joint, a generous amount of ball joint there. Uh, legs split out. There's kind of, by the way, how the workings look inside. It's ob very obvious that it's simply just literally fabric that's been slid over top of the existing leg joint. They probably have wrapped the legs and then just seam stitched the back there to make the leg tight. I simply I guess there wasn't a case where they just slid the legs on there, but uh, it's pretty clever. I hope we maybe see this with a future figure release. Double hinge on the knee, by the way. And uh, she does have, I think, a swivel in the thigh. 
uh, that maybe the swivel is actually around the ball joint in the area, the socket area in the underskirt section. And uh, then she has the toe articulation or foot articulation, rotates all the way around and hinges back and forth. And yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, but yes, if you are also wondering, she has the same ankles as all the male figures. So something to look forward to. As you can see, the figures stand. I don't have any problems with them. They stand actually a lot better than the Rorschach and the Mime. Since looking at the Mime, I've noticed that the Mime's ankles have gotten a little bit looser, and that makes me even more sad. There is something that is problematic and almost the curse that's looming over the DC Essentials line, and I think all of it can be circulated around the ankle area. They need to do something different with those ankles. Normal ankles like that should work, and yet there's something about the way that they've constructed them that ultimately causes all of these figures to get really, really loose and be unable to stand. So far, not the case with Comedian, nor not the case with Marionette, but certainly as with everything else, time will tell. When we had a look at the Doomsday Clock, Rorschach, and Mime, my big problem with both the figures really sat more heavily on the shoulders of Rorschach, and that was more cosmetic than it was anything else. Just really poor choices when it came to why they used that printing on his mask. Here, I don't have any of those problems, cosmetically. Both figures, which is something I didn't really mention too much in the previous review, but both these figures and the previously looked at figures resonate more like they're cartoon. Like, they're more animated characters. They're animated versions of the Doomsday Clock. If Doomsday Clock ever made its way to a DC animated feature, which I'm sure down the road, eventually it will. These figures don't feel like they're realistic as they did in the comics, but instead, like I said, look like they're more animated than anything else. Both the figures look good, to their credit. I don't have any problems cosmetically with them, but here is almost the opposite. It's just choices that they made with the molds. Uh, for example, Comedian. Why does his shoulder pop off? And why is it only tabbed in place by two small notches? This will guarantee you any future outings of trying to move his limbs around will guarantee the exact same result every single time. That shoulder pad will pop off and likely fly across the room. You could glue it into place, but it does beg the question, why should you have to fix a figure when you immediately get it out of packaging? But that's probably what I'm going to have to do to ensure that Comedian's shoulder pad doesn't pop off. Of course, the rest of that can just be chalked up to uh, the ankle problems that so far these figures don't have. But I know, much like every other DC Essentials figures that I have in my collection, and it's sad that I'm looking at them sort of deteriorating be, you know, in front of my eyes. Those ankles continue to be a problem. And I know I continue to mention this in these reviews, but it's something that hasn't gone away. Comedian doesn't have it yet. Marionette doesn't have it yet. But Mime already started having loose ankles. And I know that time will only tell before these figures start giving me the exact same problems as the Essentials figures had in my previous collection or in my existing collection. So it's something that DC Collectibles really needs to go back to the drawing board. As good as these figures do look, though I don't feel like they look as much like their comic counterpart, but as a possible animated feature film, as good as the figures do look, DC uh, DC Comics, DC Collectibles, really needs to reevaluate and go back to the drawing board when it comes to the way these figures are constructed. Nothing really is wrong from the top torso of these figures. All the problem still sits firmly planted on those loose ankles. And even though these figures don't have loose ankles yet, I know it's a future that I'm going to have to face. And that makes me sad. Don't be sad, though, for the future of these figures. Enjoy the figures for what they are right now. And I know that sort of doesn't mean too much because you really want a figure to stand the test of time if you want to have it in your collection. You want the figure to be just as tight. All the joints still work just the way that they did when you first got it out of packaging. Oh yeah, I forgot. Comedians also got really loose arms that were immediately out of packaging. Either way though, uh, take this humble reviewer's opinions with a grain of salt. If you guys are interested in picking this setup for yourself, both the Rorschach and the Mime in the previous review and the Comedian and Marionette in this review are available now in local comic book stores if you are interested in picking them up for yourself. Today we were having a look at the DC Collectibles. 
construction wise otherwise construction of figures otherwise today we were having a look at the doomsday clock this was the comedian and marionettes nice by the way also maybe this is the first female figure that we're getting from the dc comics essentials i would certainly have to go through the mind my database in my mind to figure out whether there was another outing but i think this might very well be the first dc comics essentials a female figure that we've gotten a precursor to maybe what we may get for future figure releases Pretty happy with these molds so far. Well, the female figure mold, pending, of course, the ankles. There, I'm not going to mention any more. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. My friends, my colleagues, people of the interweb, and certainly more videos will be coming your way. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.